The characters of this picture can confuse a modern spectator, feeling pity and even disgust. Though 500 years ago, such canvases evoked rather curiosity and laughter. In this picture, the blind leading the blind, Peter Bruegel the Elder tried to express the moral tragedy of mankind through the physical ugliness of his characters. Dutch artist Peter Bruegel was a great realist and inquisitive researcher of life. Though many of his drawings, engravings, and canvases overpopulated with small figures and details, at first sight seemed to be a mixture of real and imaginary things. The artist frequently represents an opposite view of the world, where all things are contrary. The devil listens to a confession, Icarus perishes in the deep, and the blind are guided by the blind. The plot of Bruegel's canvas, it has another name, the parable of the blind men, is connected to evangelical parables about the unreasonable blind man who was the guide of his misfortunate blind friends. Can the blind guide the blind? It is said in the Gospel from Matthew. Leave them alone, they are blind leaders of blind, and if a blind man guides a blind man, they both will fall into a pit. For several centuries, this parable served as the didactical example of unreasonable behavior of people possessed by spiritual blindness. With Bruegel, these Christian motives were fantastically bound with realism and symbolism. Holding each other, the six unfortunate men walk along rough and inflated ground. And then the trouble happens. The blind guide with his staff could not grope the place where the hill ends. With his belongings, he is falling into the river, carrying down the men behind. Consecutively, as a slow motion movie, Bruegel represented all phases of falling, transferred on a chain from the first blind man to those who follow him and inevitably fall into the river. It is interesting that the artist shows various types of blindness with such accuracy that modern ophthalmologists would diagnose the characters. So the third blind man suffers from corneal leukoma, also called cataract, and the second man's eyes are gouged out, probably due to a fight or as some sort of punishment. Bruegel used unusual painting techniques called gavazel. Perhaps he borrowed it from his mother-in-law, the miniaturist artist Majkin Wertholst. Strongly diluted distemper, when used on canvas, imitated the same images used in expensive carpets. Ruthless curiosity of the artist to the ugly and crippled people was in accordance to the spirit of that time. The ugliness was considered comical and it made the public laugh. The author didn't display any sign of pity to his characters. By means of physical ugliness, the artist allegorically expressed spiritual blindness of puppet-like people moving towards the unknown in an unavoidable and terrible death. The destiny of Peter Bruegel and his contemporaries was a sad one. Religious intolerance, gallows, and inquisition fires were the usual things of the day. In 1567, a year before Bruegel painted the blind, the Spanish conquerors established a very severe terror in the Netherlands. More than 8,000 people had been executed. Though in reply to heroic resistance of the people, a higher society, like a blind guide, preferred to join the conquerors in order to oppress the rebels. Some researchers assume it was exactly disappointment in life and people that inspired Bruegel to create the blind. In spite of the ugliness of Bruegel's characters, there is a magnificent beauty to be seen. As the artist represents the silent and deserted landscape of Brabant, the hilly plain, the rural peaked huts, and a small cozy church. Until now, this country church, Ped St. Anne, stands between Ninove and Brussels. The serenity and freshness of Bruegel's landscape speaks of the eternity of the universe. Even the small river where all six men are destined to be drowned looks idyllic. The blind men figures seem even more repulsive and terrible, 
on the background of this world's silent beauty. Showing contrast between a serene landscape and the ugliness of stupid, embittered people, Bruegel only saw spiritual beauty in nature. The motive of the evangelical parable about blind men had already been used by the artist in his composition, The Flemish Proverbs. Yet on the panel, The Twelve Proverbs, there is such an inscription. You always go confidently, stand on your ground, and don't trust anybody except the Lord. As when one blind man guides another blind man, both of them will be seen falling into a pit. At the time of social catastrophes and tormented Netherlands, the canvases of the moralist Peter Bruegel were no less significant than the works of the humanist Erasmus of Rotterdam. The great artist Peter Bruegel the Elder laid a foundation to landscape techniques that is still used today. His canvas, The Blind Men, done one year before his death, warns the spectator of choosing a wrong way, a path into the darkness of spiritual doubts.